Hello and welcome back to our equipment system series. Thank you for joining us and in this episode we're going to be going on how to make the character retain the equipment they have equipped on them in between inventory loads. So what that means is it will solve this problem that you may have discovered that when you equip an item. So and go back into it, it will wipe it clean from your character. Which obviously is not ideal. So that's what we're going to resolve today. To do this, we're going to go to your wardrobe UI. And in here on the event construct, we need a reference to the player character in order to get what equipment they have equipped. So let's get the player character reference. Get player character. But we'll need a, the specific one that we're using. So if the cast this third person. So and we're going to promote that to a variable. Okay, so now we have that reference to the player character. It means we can read from that character the equipment map they have. So let's go to the end of here in the for each loop. So in the for each loop, we are binding each of these slots over to uh, their functionality. But once we've bound them, what we're going to do is take the uh, array index here and we're going to find the equipment inside the player character. So we're going to drag the player character reference out and from there we can get access to the equipment map that we made. Is get the equipment map. And then from that I want to find the uh, specific row name associated to the slot. So I do find and now asking for which one I want to use here. I want this in terms of its number. So enums come in two forms. You've got the enum value, which is torso, legs, hair, etc. Also the byte value. The byte refers to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And they correspond accordingly. So 0 equals torso, 1 equals legs. And Knowing that, we can use the array index to solve this problem. So the array index is going from 0 up. If I take this array index integer, take it to a byte, uh, to byte, and then if I drag in my byte value to the enum, it will convert it over to the enum value. We now got the row name. I'm going to set that row name to this slot. Drag from the array element, and we're going to do set row name. There. We then have to tell our row to refresh and show the correct details. So again, I'm going to drag from the array element out to the refresh details. Okay, calling our refresh slot details function. So double click on that and it open it up for us. And it, this is what it looks like currently. An issue we have is that when it does first load up on the pre construct, it will actually wipe out the row name from the character because its equipment is being set here. So I need to separate this bit from this bit. So, what I'm going to do here is on the refresh slot details, I'm going to have sequence, sequence, line. and then zero is going to go to the get data table, like where it was basically. And then one is going to go to this end bit here. This. Okay, so that should allow us to change and set that and refresh it and it still be okay. Window. Let's test that out. And if I equip some items, I turn it off, and when I turn it back on again, it's going to read from the player character and assign the slots to those uh, that equipment map, keeping the previous items that we had already equipped. Perfect. So the next thing to worry about is encountering how to save the data that we've equipped 
between each game load. So if we close the game and reopen it, it remembers what we've equipped. So for this, we have to create a save game file. So we're going to go first of all and create a game instance. Do that by going to Blueprint Class and searching down here for Game Instance. We'll choose the normal game instance. Select this and we'll call this one Custom. So game instance is used because it is uh, persistent, meaning it exists and uh, pertains across all levels. So it loads, the first thing that loads up when the game starts and it remains across the whole entire thing. It doesn't ever change or go away. We use that because we create our save game object in there, meaning the reference to the save game object will also persist across all levels. So I'm going to go into my custom game instance and we're going to use the init event initialize event this is the event that is first handled when the game initial so first of all we want to check the save game exists okay so we're going to go save game uh does save game exist yes and plot yeah now with the save game exists we want to check a slot name the slot name refers to the sort of the file name essentially save file so we want to put in here the name of the file we want to use so i'm going to variables and we'll call this one save file name and this will be a string and we're going to drag that in and we'll set the default value for this to uh, save data okay in fact i'll make it a bit more specific we'll call this one player okay from there uh, we're going to use a boolean check here. Check into launch. And if it does exist, it will load it up. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to create a new one. So let's go through the process of creating a new save game object. Go down here and create a new blueprint class. Again, down the bottom search box, you're going to search for a save game. Object. And we'll call this one player. And open it up and in this one in particular we'll use this to store all the information we need about the player itself so i'm going to go to the variables here and we're going to store the equipment map the player has one equipment and this has to be exactly the same variable type as the one we have on the player character so here we're looking for our equipment categories set to a map with the values being set to names Hit compile on that one and then this save data here we want to just uh, make a custom event in here and we're going to call this event um, save equipment and on save equipment the process of this is we're going to uh, plug in a input here for the character we want to so we're going to go to inputs input here this will be a uh, character this will be set to our third person character class. So from there, we're going to get equipment app. You're going to set that to this equipment map. And then we're going to take the save. Save game slot. Save game object is going to be itself. Slot name is going to be the same name we use on our game instance. So player save data. So file and save. Okay, that'll save equipment. We also want one that will load equipment too. So we make another custom event in here. This one load. And for this one, we're going to have the input again for the character we want to use. So we know who we're sending the equipment to. Character. And the equipment from the character can be set equipment map. And that's going to be our equipment map variable here. Oh, and now thing that we have to worry about on this is that when we are setting the equipment map to the character we still need the character to equip 
all the items. But at the moment, the character. Uh, the character only equips the items when we call the equip item function. So what we're going to do is actually do a massive for each loop for all those items. Let's go back to our player save data. And on the character pin, we're going to drag this out here to equip item. Now, for this, we need to do a for loop, a for each loop for each of the keys so we know what their row names are. So, with the uh, equipment map variable here, <clears throat> we're going to drag this out and type in keys, do a for each loop for each key. And what that's going to do, let me just put the root in here. And what that's going to do there is going to go through each item and equip it. And the array element is going to go into the category. And the row name is going to come from that equipment map again. So I'm going to re root in there and I'm going to find. The item we want to use. So the row element will go into that. The result will go into the row name. Now I'll call that equip item function all the time for every single one of these, uh, for all each one basically. Okay, and updating them and also updating the stats like we had in the previous episode. So that should go for each of those, and that's our player save data done here. Uh, obviously, you have other stuff in the player capture you may want to use too, like inventory and so forth. You load all that. It, Okay, so next we have to go to our custom game instance again. So if it's false and we don't have the save file already, we have to create a new one. Drag down here and do create save game object. And you're going to choose our save game object from the player save data. We then want to promote this to a variable. This will be called player. Okay. Then on the true, we're going to Get the save game data. So save game, and you load save game from slot. The slot being the save file name, and the return value here we have to cast to our our, our uh, oh wait, cast to our player save data. Knows which one it. Then as player save data, we're going to drag out here and promote that to. Same variable. We're not going to not promote it, so you're just going to set it to player. Okay, so either way, it's loading in either existing data or creating new empty data. Okay. Um, once it's done that, um, we hit save and go back to our player character. So the player character at the start of the game needs to call this load data, and every time we change equipment, we need to call the save data. So let's go to our players begin play event here, and for this we're going to get game instance and cast to our custom game instance. From there we can get the hold of the player save data. Get player save data. Which you may wish to promote to variable in here, as it could be quite useful to call back to later on for other things, and it makes it gives you a quick shortcut to that. Uh, but whilst we're here, we're going to drag from player save data and do load character we want to load here is self. There you go. That's the loading part done. You're going to go to equip item. At the end here, at the end here, after calculate stats. Take that player save data out and do save. After each equipment change, we are saving the character here being self again. I'll the last thing we need to do is go to our edit settings and set it to use our custom game instance. So, you do that, you go to maps and modes, and at the bottom here, the game instance class is our custom. Okay, so let's test this out now. Play. And this should now create a new save file, which is empty. Uh, equip items. And as I'm equipping items, it should be saving those items to that slot. 
If I go back here, escape, and push play again. You can see now it's kept my items as we've had it. In the inventory, they're still there. Perfect. Rip a beard. And I leave that. Game. Read that data and see it all. Excellent. So that'll do it for this episode. We are now retaining our retaining sorry our uh, equipment data, which is great between games and between inventory. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch the next part, in that part we're going to go over to the uh, final bits on the UI side of things and some cleanup bits. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can watch that part plus all my other videos before anyone else from just $1 a month. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons and my YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you again for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.